Hey guys, Billy Davidson here, Davidson Pressure Wash Painting, Hammond, Louisiana. Wanted to show y'all something that I'm working on right now. Um, as you see in the title, cleaning dumpsters. You can make a lot of money doing this. I'm going to show you how I make a lot of money doing this every month. Um, a lot of money. So we're going to go over a few things about this and how you can do it too. Obviously, this is a dumpster area. Uh, these dumpster areas, this is for a fast food chain, a national chain. We clean these every 14 days like clockwork and some other stuff too. But uh, mainly the dumpster is what we're going to talk about in this video here. Um, we're going to talk about how we clean it, why we clean it, and um, how much we may uh, get paid to clean it and how often. So a few things I want to talk about. Um, these dumpsters is a... Uh, it's a, it's a uh, it's a it's an area where you know food is uh, being dumped. Of course, you got a grease nail, grease um, container there. Um, of course, it's a dumpster. There's a lot of food products going here. This is not like it's a clothing store or an electronics store. It's a fast food restaurant, so you know obviously a lot of uh, food goes in here from the food preparation process and from the trash cans that's on the premises. People eating here uh throwing away their drinks and fries and you know how it all is so all of this is going to this dumpster so obviously this is a uh this is a buffet to a lot of insects it's a buffet to a lot of rodents and uh and other things and we'll talk about that here um so i have been trained uh formally in uh disinfection sanitation and sterilization so all of those are a um a different level of cleanly cleanliness if you will obviously we're not going to be able to sanitize this this one's not going to be a sterile field once i get done with it by by any stretch of imagination but i can achieve a relatively uh a good positive sanitation on it and possibly to disinfect it you know while i'm here i can disinfect the surfaces now obviously that's not going to last forever so that's why we come in about every two weeks. Now, the way you can do this about every two weeks, a couple ways. You can approach the, the fast food restaurant general manager, would be the one you need to talk to, and you know the GM or the DM, which is district manager, and let them know this is a service that you provide, and let them know how you're gonna do it, how often you do it, and how much you're gonna charge, and why we do it. So, obviously, um, this would be in a fast food restaurant, their dumpster areas are inspected. Uh, just as, as if it was their kitchen areas inspected, their food prep is inspected, also the dumpster area is, is inspected. These dumpster areas are regulated. They have to be so many feet away from the building. They have to be maintained for several reasons. For cleanliness of, um, of the restaurant, um, the hold down rodents and roaches and bu uh, bugs and also uh, you have workers coming in here dumping trash. So. It could be a safety issue for their employees, their workers' comp, that sort of thing, their own company policy. So, so we got a bunch of reasons why we want to clean this. Um, for their government re regulations, their go code violations could, could uh, definitely play a part in it. And then their personal workers' comp policies will also require these dumpster areas to be cleaning. The last thing they want is a worker to come in here and have a rodent jump on them or some ants get into them and eat them up while they dumping trash in here and you know they at least try to mitigate that risk as much as possible by cleaning it by disinfecting it um so what we do we spray a sodium hypochlorite y'all most of y'all guys are familiar with that i got mine in a pump up sprayer tonight um and you could come in here with a soft wash pump blow it in there with a soft wash pump uh downstream injector probably is not quite strong enough for it um, so you can do it. Um, X jet would work on this um, Soft wash pump or either just this a little $15 pump up sprayer um, so Like I tell you before I was trained in, in disinfection and sanitation at one time So I don't know if every you know everything what I'm about to say may have been changed a little bit but about 20 years ago when I went through my certification we were taught that 0.5 percent SH is considered sanitizing at a seven to ten minute duration so if you can keep it wet for seven to ten minutes at 0 0.5 is considered 
the uh, very bottom end of sanitizing and oftentimes you want to go a step above that in my particular case I'm throwing a two percent on it instead of a half a percent I'm putting about a two percent on it with a little surfactant in it which keeps it wet and allows it to dwell longer so I can achieve that seven to nine minute time frame where the sodium hypochlorite is activated and another thing that is benefit to me it is nighttime as you can clearly see being nighttime your ultraviolet light is not degrading your sodium hypochlorite as you are just doing your disinfectant so that's another reason why you might want to kind of make these rounds at night so basically what we do we got a two percent solution mix in here you could go three you could go four at that point you're probably not doing much more as far as sanitizing um even you're not going to get this sterile you know if that was the case they would take surgical surgical instruments in a theater operating theater and just bleach them and then they would be uh you know sterile so we know that don't happen and sterilization takes a little bit different process about a 700 degrees and um over you know a duration like uh, at least 15 minutes if you're familiar with the auto clads um that are uh a device that uh, disinfects in a surgical uh, operation theater so that's a whole different story so we are just spraying our sodium hypochlorite our sodium hypochlorite two percent is real simple if this was a one gallon pump up sprayer if you're only using a six percent if you divided that by four and put a quart in here one fourth of one gallon you would achieve a two percent and a two and a one gallon sprayer we'll go over that again six percent sodium hypochlorite is something you can buy at the dollar store or walmart one quart of that six percent in a one gallon pump up sprayer and then you add three quarts of water which makes you a total of one gallon so by volume you're going to have a two percent there pretty straightforward not all that hard to uh to understand um also, if you wanted it a little bit stronger, that's fine too. You could use it 50 50 if you want. Anyway, you'd have a 3%, you know, give or take. And the reason why it's a give or take is because the 6% in the jug is not, it, you know, it's not really uh, set in stone. It could be 6%, it might be 5 when you get it in the jug. It could be as high as 8 or 9. It's very inconsistent. So we want to make sure we're at least achieving that minimum. So what we do, obviously we come in here, get our pump up sprayer, pump it up, and we just spray everything. I've done coated this once. You don't have to coat it, you know, too many times. Once, twice, I do the doors, all where their workers are gonna touch, the garbage cans. Hell, why not, you know? Bleach is cheap. Spray their garbage cans. Be mindful about touching this stuff. You, know, you obviously hit, got it bleach on it, so you, you know, use your foot. You got work boots on like I do, spray inside that garbage can. The workers will appreciate it, I promise you. So I spray everything that can be touched. I spray the ground, I spray the walls, I spray the dumpsters, I spray inside the dumpsters. There's rodents that get in here, there's roaches, there's flies, there's spiders. And believe it or not, I have seen snakes inside of these dumpster areas. Obviously, where you got rodents, snakes want to eat rodents, and uh, they come in and have a feast on them. So, a lot of times they're not poisonous, or should I say venomous? They usually are non-venomous snakes, but oftentimes there'd be some rat snakes or chicken snakes, that sort of thing. So, that being said, let this dwell. That two percent on there, let this dwell at least 10 minutes maybe come back if you got a little extra time hit it again you know you want to hit all this stuff you know just kind of holding down this population of insects and rodents as we know rodents they don't have a bladder so they're a very nasty animal um they don't have a bladder so they they defecate as they ambulate they they uh, don't have a bladder, so as they walk, these rodents dig in this trash, and as they walk these edges, um, they will, amb as they ambulate, and that perfuses their kidneys and, um, and it releases urine. And unfortunately, uh, in rodents, their urine isn't sterile, so um, that's, that's oftentimes going to be a contentious point for disease. 
And another thing you need to worry about these mice and rodents, their urine also carries a bacteria called leptospirosis. Now, if you get that leptospirosis, um, some of the symptoms is headache, uh, muscle fatigue, and things of that sort, and you come in contact with it by uh, touching something that the rat has urinated on, and uh, then touching your face, your mouth, or something that it, you know ends up getting into a mucous membrane. Uh, in severe cases, a leptospirosis could cause um, internal bleeding in, in your diaphragm, in your pulmonary system, and that sort. So it's very, very important to, uh, to have this disinfected and cleaned properly and uh, hold down some of those uh, strange bacteria that for sure you, you, you don't want to come in contact with. And also, when you're dealing with rodents, rodents have very, very poor eyesight, so they use their whiskers for feeling. So that's why they want to hang around corners and edges. They, you know, so you disinfect this, sanitize it with some SH. Now, once we get all this in here, sometimes if, the, if this place hadn't been cleaned in a while, you'll see some roaches running out. You can spray them too, you know, the hell with them. Um, they got the German cockroaches in some of these dumpster areas. There are a lot of um, Asian cockroaches and pine roaches. There's a little bit of everything. Spiders, insects, ants. You got to watch these ants. These ants are, are vi very vicious in some of these dumpsters. So a lot of times those ants aren't eating, uh, biting on anything that's warm. And here you come and you like a little buffet. Now, what I do always before I pick up any trash in here, even with gloves, I'll disinfect it with my 2% and um, let it sit. And then I'll grab my gloves. If there's any loose trash, I'll put them in a dumpster. And then I'll come in here at my power washer and just spray it, power washing. You know, you don't need really need hot water for it. Hot water is helpful. But if you got hot, uh, the right chemicals, it's not necessary. So try to get these done about every... Uh, it's hard to get these done every two weeks. It's hard for them to come across the money um, for that. But oftentimes you can do it once every 30 days. Um, and even sometimes I have have most of mine are um, every 45 days. But I do have some that's every 14 days. So that's awesome. So do what you can to try to land it. I know a guy out in Milwaukee. This is all he does. He does dumpsters. He does about 10 a night. And um, generally between $100 and $150 per, per dumpster. He does 10 a, night, so 10 a night, so he's got a route built, and that's all he does. You you know, you need bleach. You need something to spray water, whether it's uh, – you really don't need an 8-gallon machine for sure. You, a little 3- or 4-gallon minute machine would sit back and, and blast this stuff away, you know. And, it, and, look, again, it don't have to be perfect. So if you leave some scribble marks, usually that's fine. You know, main thing, your purpose is to disinfect and um, and sanitize. Now, once I rinse all this down, I'll also come in here and kind of recoat the concrete, especially the corners. Like I just mentioned, the rodents like to hang around corners because their vision's poor and they use their whiskers for feelers. So I like to put a little bit in the corners. I call it leaving a little treat farm. And oftentimes this SH, if it don't rain for a few days, it sticks around and it keeps the rodents, roaches, insects down for an extended period of time, even after you come. So, you know, you're serving two, two purposes. We're not calling this pest control, but it does help to keep it clean and keep the pest away. And also, so a lot of times these, uh, these kids that work at these fast food restaurants, they don't know. They come in here touching all this stuff, touching their face, grabbing their phone. A lot of times they back here today. They want to come throw away trash. That way they can sneak out a text or two. Well, it's, they're touching this, they're touching their phone, they touch their face, you know, all this. So this is a good idea to try to upsell or to try to come in and sell this to a general manager or a, or a district manager. And you're doing them a favor because they, they need it done. If they don't have it done, they could catch a $1,500 fine per day if they're in code violation. So keep this in mind. Like I said, $100 to $125 each. Um, for these little small ones, if they're bigger, you can go, uh, you know, charge more. Sometimes you got two of these big dumpsters in here. Sometimes you got two stores sharing one dumpster square, but they have a dumpster each. And then you could charge each store or each restaurant. Um, 
kind of one brings to mind. We do a subway that's attached to a gas station. They both serve drinks and food and coffee and all that. So they're both their dumpsters. There's label one's labeled Subway and one's labeled I think it's racetrack or something. So we charge a hundred dollars per side. That's two hundred dollars. We're there like maybe forty five minutes, and then we go on and do a bunch more that night. So, like always, if this video helps, please uh, like it and subscribe to it. That lets me know that I'm getting to y'all out there. I could be doing something else, but I wanted to teach teach all this. Hopefully this helps. Um, like, subscribe, leave a comment below. Let me know that it's working out for you or if I can help you in any way or if you got any suggestions of any other videos. So you can make a good bit of money doing this, even in part time, even if you got a 40 hour a week job and you um, want to do this on the weekends or late at night. If you got an out another extra hour or two where you're not really doing nothing, you come out and make a couple hundred dollars. You know, just, just imagine if you are working a full-time job or a part-time job, what would another $1,500 a month come coming into your family household mean? And it can mean a lot, you know. Uh, it can mean paying a house note pretty much. You know, $1,500 a month, definitely pay a house note in most cases. Or $1,200 a month, couple truck notes, car note, insurance, that sort of thing. And you can do this. So don't be afraid of it. Um, if you need my help personally, my phone number is 985-345-0778. My name is Billy Davidson, and I'm on a Davidson Pressure Wash Bain, and we'll talk soon.